They say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Although we'd like to admit it or not, this is indeed a fact. Studies have found that we form a general opinion of someone within the first seven seconds of meeting them. I'm talking about judging whether or not the person is likable, loyal, trustworthy, and even intelligent. Mind you, the advice I'm going to be sharing with you can be applied in a number of situations. So like an interview, a date, or meeting a potential friend for the first time. However, I would like to zone in a little bit and share with you five tips on how you can make a great first impression on your professors. Because in my personal experience and opinion, this initial interactions that you have with your professor will not only determine whether or not you're gonna like and enjoy the class, but also how well you will perform in it. Number one, what's your intention? Thinking about the desired outcome that you would like to get out of a situation or an interaction is a form of visualization, or as I like to call it, mental practice. Seeing literally yourself walking to the classroom, introducing yourself to the professor, what's in your surroundings, who's there, what you're going to say, what you expect the professor might talk back, all of this primes your brain to that event. Think of it as the practice test before your exam, only it's in your mind. This method can be tremendously effective at reducing anxiety and stress before a stressful event. Simply because your brain is like practicing being in that situation, so it doesn't come as a surprise. It doesn't catch you off guard or make you uncomfortable because you've seen it before in your mind. You've practiced it. You've went through all the pros and cons and what can happen and what are the risks of saying this and that. So you've already like been there, you know? Not to mention that by envisioning a positive outcome has an impact on your self-esteem and tends to boost you up just by making you more comfortable and à l'aise with the whole thing. Since everything is connected, your mood will then influence your body posture, body language, tone of voice, how well your phrases flow, and how well the event will actually play out. Number two, taking initiative. Here's a little secret for you. Teachers are, on average, just as nervous as you are on the first day of class. So why not take it in your own hands and go break the ice? It can be something as simple as, hello, Professor Leiden, I'm Anna, your new student. Do you need any help setting up? Or, hi, Professor Leiden, my name is Anna. How are you this morning? I don't care if you're an extrovert, an introvert, you can do it. Do it. Also, this segues it pretty well into my next point, number three, which is master the art of small talk. I plan on doing an entire video on this topic, but I want to know if you're interested. So give this video a thumbs up if you are, just so I know. But in a nutshell, kind of to give you a taste of what I would talk about in said video, the key to small talk, in my opinion, is not only active listening, but also active research. Before you step into that classroom, before you just say hello to the teacher, know something about them. Do some background research. It not only shows initiative, it shows that you're serious and that you're professional and that you kind of are already prepared for what's to come. Number four, genuinely open. I'm talking about body language, body posture. When you adopt an open body posture, shoulders back, make eye contact straight, chest in front, head a bit up. This makes people believe that you are confident, approachable, and just a likable person overall. So use it to your advantage. I mean, come on, the research is out there. Number two, don't fake it. Fakeness is so obvious, especially to psychology professors that see this every day. Story time, in a very low part of my life, I was struggling really hard to get a job. And I've been to like countless interviews. I'm talking about over 30, okay? And I just got that negative reaction. Like, no, you didn't get it, you didn't get it. And I always felt drained after the interviews and just like, oh my God, I did my absolute best. And I, I just tell them everything they wanted to hear. And I just kissed their butt during the entire 
hours. It shows when you're saying something just to please someone else. It shows on your face. It shows in your like laugh lines in your eyes. Be genuinely yourself. If you're funny, be funny. If you're shy, be shy. It's like talking to a friend, but just a bit more polite. That's it. And finally, my last point is called respect. The basics. Honestly, I can't believe I'm gonna say this because it should be obvious. But I cannot tell you how many people do it and I'm like, oh dude, why? Seven seconds, come on. Don't chew gum when you meet someone, when you talk to someone, when you shake their hand. Don't avoid eye contact and look away or look on your phone and look bored. If you're wearing a shirt, a t-shirt, a dress and it's wrinkly AF, for the love of mm, iron it, it looks nasty, it looks unkept, it looks like you don't take care of you, poor hygiene registers to people that you can't be bothered to take care of yourself. So why would they be bothered to talk to you? If you can even take care and love yourself, how can you take care and have a nice office and be active in class and hand in reports on time beautifully like they like it? You know? It's in the details. It takes a tiny bit of effort, but it makes a huge difference. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a, a thumbs up if you like it. And subscribe to me if you like what you see because I post videos every Thursday. Bye guys!